Gather round. It's time for your real estate chalk talk with the Hitner Group. Listen closely as your coaches discuss the culture, the economy, and the political scene, and how it affects your home and your real estate investments. Real Estate Chalk Talk is where you learn the science of buying and selling real estate and the art of living in your home. Your education begins in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hey there. Welcome to the program. This is your Real Estate Chalk Talk with the Hitner Group. Hitnergroup.com, H-I-T-T-N-E-R Group. That's all one word. Hitnergroup.com, 612-627-8000. At 612-627-8000. Give us a ring-a-ling-a-ling. Be happy to have a chat with you about your real estate adventure. That conversation with no cost and absolutely no obligation. Mike Hilborn's in the studio with us. Substituting in for Calvin Kamek, who's uh, absentee today because he's doing a little continuing education. My wife's doing a little CE work, too. She's got to take the ethics uh, training her once every three years deal so she can keep her license. Nice. I you going to fill us in on the financial markets then, Mike? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do what I can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Looks good from here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's what's going on in the market, kids. Uh, here's just a curious thing. Price reductions are clipping around 10.5% of the existing inventory every week is doing a price reduction. Interesting. And we have, according to Housing Wire... You know Housing Wire, Keith? Mm -hmm. Housing Wire reports that 30%, 37% more inventory is available nationally than uh, last year, but uh, pending in, pendings are only up 8%. So that uh, kind of tells the story about uh, a growing inventory. Uh, cancellations are kind of clipping along about 200 to 225, 220 to 225 a week. And we'll continue to see homes come off the market through... Beginning of the year. Probably, yep. Uh, inventory is down. We got uh, about 130 homes came off the market this week. Uh, we got uh, 7,300 uh, houses on the market, 7,400 last week. Uh, inventory pendings are still, they're selling through at about seven low 700, 740 this week, 720 last week. Uh, days on market for those pendant sales creeping up, though, we're at 39.4%, so it's getting about 40 days on market for the ones that sold. <clears throat> so that means that the the average days on market for existing inventory is going to be probably a little bit more than that. Yeah, creeping up on 30 on uh, House and Savage had it sold. And uh, it was a first-generation home buyer, so stacking all the programs that Calvin usually talks mm -hmm. about on the show. If you're a first-generation home buyer, you have a lot of cash available to you for down payments um, and things like that. Uh, had a great offer that we negotiated a little bit off the price for them. And then they had their home inspection and came through and wanted a, a bunch of additional money afterwards. There wasn't anything um, inherently wrong with the house or there wasn't a, any large items. It was just the buyer had uh, tried to use the opportunity there to get some more money out of the transaction. So they're all already getting a bunch of money from the down payment assistance programs that are available to them. And then wanted some additional help with the closing costs then after the home inspection. And it just... It didn't come together, so we put the house back on the market. So it's cute house in Savage, three thirty two is the price. It's like a fifteen hundred and fifty square foot, all main level living if you want to laundry, mm. bedroom, kitchen, all on the main level, and then there's a half story above. So it's a four bedroom total, so three on the main, one up in the half story, and um, all kind of redone, like the kitchen, the bathrooms, um, super cute little house and. Savage in Savage, Minnesota. What's the price on that? <clears throat> 332. 332. It's a four bed, one bath, mm -hmm. two car garage. So the one bath is a little bit of a drawback if mm -hmm. we want to talk uh, reality of that listing there. Mm -hmm. There are a few others in the neighborhood, though, that have sold in the 330s um, with one bathrooms as well. Similar so. house. Yep. Okay, I got a, qu a quiz. Uh, absorption rate. So the absorption rate is a factor of inventory and days on market move through. So the absorption rate, they talk about how many months' supply of inventory do we have on the market. Of the seven-county metropolitan area, what do you think is the lowest, has the lowest, uh, fastest moving market, lowest absorption rate? Which which of the seven counties do you think it is? Which of the seven counties? Yep. Which uh, one do you think is moving the quickest? Right now, currently? Mm -hmm, right now. Mm, Ramsey. Well, close. It's second place. Anoka County. Oh, really? It's, it's 224 
months supply of inventory. And the oldest, the slowest, what do you think? Of the seven counties. Hennepin. Carver. Carver it is. Yeah. Carver County, 3.19 months supply of inventory. Ramsey is 2.26 months. Uh, Dakota County, 2.63. Scott County, 2.68. All Close. About that, yeah, all in that same Hannibal Nobody County, wants to go live in Carver 000. County, though. I guess it's too far to drive. That's like uh, Victoria's Gaspers. Carver County, right? Yeah. It's a nice area. Very nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Higher end homes, though. Mm-hmm. You know, and newer. A lot of newer stuff. Sure, newer construction. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's, you think that the newer construction is, leads to longer market times, or uh, what? It might, just because of build times, you know, from the time it was uh, sold and finally get to move in. Okay, mm-hmm. another quiz for you, kids. Okay, we're getting, we're coming up to fall, right? So we're doing maintenance. I had my, I had my, uh, is concrete, it fall yet? Concrete level. Is levels. it technically fall yet? It's technically fall, isn't it? It's been summer for so long. I know. <laughs> so I had my concrete leveled th- yesterday they were in. Fabulous. I didn't realize how crooked it all was until they got it leveled. And I walk out there, it's like, wow. This garage or? Smooth. Or, uh, no, no oh oh, he's got all those oh, patios patio. yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. outside. Yeah, so patio. last week we had in, uh, who was it? Basement Authority. Basement Authority. Um, and they were on the show last week. And now they've come out and they've done your your work. Yeah, did the work. <clears throat> so, and my back door, I had a new door put on. I had new siding, a bunch of work done in the house this year. And and so, on the back where you come into the back of the the garage, I mean, it was like a hole back there. It would all sunk down, was running towards the foundation, is making me nervous. So I had them come out and do uh, the thing. So they did all around the whole back of the house, all all the patio area, and all that nice level. You know, you'd go with the snowblower and about knock your teeth out because you hit the thing and boom, you know, shoveling too. You get the shovel in the gut because you're pushing the snow. Perfect. Yeah. So now that's all smoothed out. And uh, and they had, uh, they raised by that back door. It was almost three inches below. And they, could, they brought it right up to the threshold. Yeah. I mean, it looks You could see right beautiful. on the foundation where the concrete initially was. Supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how, how long will that? Stay that way. Well, think? it's warranted forever. Five year, five year warranty. Okay. So they said yesterday when they left, and then he called again this morning just to check to make sure that everything was perfect. And they said any movement at all, any movement, call and they'll come back and fix it for no cost. And is that sand or mud or something else? They use a, a foam. Okay. Closed foam. Wow. And so they shoot the foam in there, and and he he said when they were shooting it in there, you could see the shrews and the mice and stuff were running. Wow. Oh out because all been, I'm sure they'd, they'd all buried created under, nests in there created nests underneath the, and i could hear them tapping on the on the sidewalk and you could hear it was just hollow underneath wow, there cool and by the time they're done it's all he said that foam just runs everywhere he said we've had foam run 10 feet 15 feet out in the yard and then shoot up out of a hole from yeah. mice and shrews and, and Funny. Uh, yeah anyhow so if i'm in the house and i hear a whistling noise in the house what do you think that is? A whistling noise. If you hear a whistling noise, what should you look for? About uh, probably here? either a drafty window or uh, your HVAC coming That's through exactly your ducts. Exactly what it is. It's a look for your look. Check your windows and just see if the drapes are moving, mm-hmm. because you probably got that scratching or squeaking. But whistling noise, I, I I get a little whistling noise out of my HVAC system. That's why I commented on yep, it. Yep, that's another one. I'm too. like, how can I get rid of that? I don't think I can. I just think I <clears throat> something's closed off somewhere. Yeah, you might have a, a damper closed yeah, or something. Yeah, I've gone like that. through all the dampers, stick the cell phone down the deal, and, you know, take a picture and see how the dampers look inside the ductwork. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have a zone system, too, and the dampers are all functioning properly, and I've kind of investigated as much as I can investigate on it. Scratching or squeaking in the walls? That sounds like mice to me. Sounds like mice to me. Pests and rodents. We had the, the, the world-famous story of the raccoons got into our attic and had babies. And they fell down inside the walls. And when babies are young, they can't crawl up. So they go down, and Mama was down in the walls trying to get them. Yeah. And we could hear the scratching. We tap on the on the wall, and she'd growl at us. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and so we had the exterminator come out and trap them. But the babies were still down in the walls, and they eventually, some of them made their way out and, and uh fell outside others died in the walls and uh, that's nasty smelling Do you have, then you have to extract that? we had to tear all the sheetrock off oh, the walls man. from the inside and re-insulate clean it up all that stuff the raccoon room so if you hear it scratching the in, raccoon room yeah we yeah. call it the raccoon room <laughs> so if you hear scratching that's a buzzing and humming so ah, like, i just had this uh uh we took care of some some bees in the wall mm. actually 
Oh, really? Yeah, at a listing out in Bloomington. So there was a little gap where the the soffit was going into a different portion of the siding mm-hmm. where a porch had been put on. And there was a gap there, and there was these hornets, man. I didn't even want to walk out there. Yeah. But they were in and out, in and out, and uh, we just took care of it last week. So Lots of honey in the wall there. Yeah, went in there and sprayed them, and then spray foamed it, yep. and then caulked the penetration point. Seal them up. Uh, dripping sound, of course. That's going to be dangerous. If you're dripping, it's either going to be a, you got water dripping somewhere. And uh, for sure, check that out. Maybe it's your open plumbing vents that we were talking about. It could be that. I I did hear that dripping, as a matter of fact, and it is my was my dryer vent that was getting, the wind was blowing and water was coming in. It was coming straight down the dryer no vent kid. and dripping at the, I could hear huh. it dripping. Sometimes it's best to just stop talking mm-hmm. and then listen. And listen. And see what you hear and then uh, investigate further. Give us a call, 612-627-8000. That number again, 612-627-8000. We're going to head out to break. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. This is your real estate chalk talk with the Hitner Group. Hitnergroup.com, H-I-T-T-N-E-R group.com, 612-627-8000. Last week, the National Association of Realtors uh, had uh, a powwow, and the Wall Street Journal reported that they are uh, saying that we have a 33 point Eight four million existing home sales in in uh, 24, the lowest since 1995, mm. the worst real estate year since 1995. Mm. Know, it hasn't been that bad for us, but uh, apparently it's been uh, pretty bad for some people. Yeah, what where where was that from? The Wall Street Journal was reporting it okay. from. It came uh, information came from the National Association. Um, here's a curious thing. So we had <clears throat> our neighbors over. I was telling Keith earlier we had neighbors over. Uh, to the house uh, earlier in the week. We have our, live on a private road, so we have to maintain our own roads. And so we have a little meeting talking about the road and snow plowing and all that kind of stuff. And and uh, everybody on board with what needs to be done. Everybody's on board with what needs to be done. You know, we, the road's 25 years old now, so we're all looking forward to that resurfacing. So we're going to get a bit some quotes on it this year just so we can start planning ahead. To get and, an idea what that's going to cost. <laughs> yeah, because oof. Uh, and then just the snow plowing, just because we have to plow. Since your the house street. is the biggest, then do you have like a like a twenty percent, or no? It would be twenty percent with five homes. So do you get like a thirty percent then cost uh, uh, adjustment? No, no. no you have to pay more than everybody no, else. Divided by five. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's no. not based on size because, of plot. No, because because uh, I'm only I'm only uh, you know thirty feet in from the corner. Yeah. And 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 I just had. But I isn't had that pond I, yours? It is. Okay, so you probably more than... Yeah, I don't care about the road down there, though. So I had some work done this year. So <laughs> the road from my driveway, you know, mostly all the way up to the corner, is all new. So it's only the road down the street, and it's like, what are you guys going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Not really. Okay, so then uh, my point is I was chatting with the, with the gal who just bought the house closed on, June, what would you say, June of 23. June of 23, yep. And she said it was her first home. I was like, oh, really? That's a pretty big house for your first home. How old are you? 37. 37 years old was her first home. Yeah, we were just having this conversation in the listing apartment. So now it's there again. The age of buyers rose across all spectrum. Home buyers' ages rose to uh, all home buyers are 56 years old is the average. First time home buyers, 38 years old. Is the average first-time home buyer now? That's 30, crazy. Thirty. Where? What did it used to be? Or oh, golly, twenties. But yeah. it says up from thirty-five last up year. Up from thirty-five last year. So that but number has been, been going up. up for a while. Yeah, it's been creeping up. First-time home buyers. Yeah, I was twenty-three when I bought my house. Twenty-two. Yeah, you beat me. Yeah. And the share of first-time home buyers is a, at a record low. Twenty-four percent of homes. That's always been in the high thirties. Right. Twenty-four percent of homes were first-time homebuyers. So they're priced out. That's they're priced out of the market. Straight up impact of being and, priced out of the market. And so here's the curiosity. Because that did that was increasing. That number, the share of first-time homebuyers was increasing. Mm-hmm. Um, with the interest rates being where they were, and even right. just to the tail, just to the end of it, in like twenty-two, um, probably spring of twenty-two, and then fall of twenty-two rates, you know, shot. And up. then we flood the market with first-time homebuyer instead of benefits. Incentives, yeah. And it just did nothing. Yeah. You well, know, there's so many apartment buildings. Yeah. Everywhere yeah. you go. I mean, all of a sudden, you'll, it's like, you'll go into some older part of the city, 
big brand new giant. Yeah, and I think the reality of the generation is that if you're not in a position, you know, just the age of these people and, you know, having kids and, and all that has been pushed out over the last 20 years. Um, if you're not in a position to be like thinking about having your kids and being in elementary schools and all that stuff, they think, well, what's the point? I can just call a landlord. Mm-hmm. These, 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 um, this generation generally, I'll say generally, uh, doesn't do a lot of their own things, you know, whether they were not taught to, or just don't care to, or don't have the time to, or for whatever the reason is, um, they're not fixing their own faucet. They're not, you know, putting it in their own outlet. They're not even painting their own walls. You know, they're they're paying other people to do a lot of these things. And when you can go to a nice new apartment building and it's turnkey and you don't have to do anything but call the landlord or soup to repair something in your unit, if anything even needs to be repaired in some of these newer places, that's just far more, um, in their mind, you know, convenient. The amenities are amazing too. Yeah. yeah. There, there's places that have free beer, like in a, in a social room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you just slide your card in, and, you know, golf simulators and pools. And it's unbelievable some of these places are. And they're, they're like all like that. Now. Yeah. So lifestyle changes, certainly, um, and conveniences over the last 20 years has shaped what we're seeing right now. So we had uh, uh, a benefit uh, at the mansion uh, Friday night for the Joy Collaborative, and I met a guy there. He's a commercial real real. He's not a real estate agent. He's a commercial developer, <clears throat> and they and they're get, they're consulting with building owners that have you know the old office building right and converting them into mixed use. Mm-hmm. And he said they're doing floors, so they'll have lower main level floor is is uh, some kind of retail, you know, commercial. Co- coffee shop, commercial. Then they'll have a floor that's the health club floor. So the health club's on the second floor, and it's the whole floor. Then the next floor up is going to be pickleball courts and, you know, or racket courts of some kind. So then they'll have that. And these are all buildings with taller ceilings. And uh, then the next floor up is going to be the salon area, you know, where they'll have, you know, beauty shops and this, that, and there. Then they'll have offices. And then finally up above that is is residential. Good. We're going vertical, <laughs> baby. They're going vertical, and it's like a little city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have to leave Self-contained, your, your, all uh, little, little city. Yeah. You don't have to leave your little block. Your little pod. Yep. And it's... And it's ish. Uh, yeah, ish. <laughs> But, there, you know, in a cold climate like we have, you know, in the wintertime, it's not too bad. You just kind of take the elevator down to the floor and get your coffee. And your- I don't know, man. There's something to be said, and I've seen this recently in, in some movies I've watched, and I've been like, see, see, see. But mm-hmm. we were talking this morning about going to the post office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I don't like to put my mail in my mail my mailbox. mailbox. I like to bring it to the post office for whatever reason if I am mailing anything at all. It's just like a weird thing. Um, but you get out of the house, right? And same thing with like ordering your coffee ahead. Like it's convenient, certainly, and I do it um, from time to time. But going in and communicating with people and like saying hi to the barista and, you know, those types of things. Same thing with DoorDash, like getting up, going somewhere, getting food, interacting with other humans. Like that's life right Mm -hmm. as opposed to a lot of this just like click 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 never interact with anybody never actually communicate with anybody i'm just not a huge proponent of that lifestyle Mm -hmm. i'm i think it's far more important to you you, it's i've sold so many homes to people or help people buy and sell real estate from a coffee shop just literally like the people that pour me coffee from developing a relationship with them over a period of time and, oh, what do you do? And mm-hmm. you're in here every day and you're mm-hmm. having conversations with people. That's real life, man. And this other way of doing it over the last 15 years with the advent of this thing right here, the cell phone that's taken over everybody's lives, it's just different, man. Mm-hmm. It's different. You lose that human connection. It really sucks. Yeah, I agree. Because a lot of people are, I mean, you can embrace the technology but maintain the human connection, Mm -hmm. you know? And I talked to my daughter this morning. I'm kind of going off a little bit right now, but I pop in on my ring camera from my cell phone and I see my 10-year-old daughter just ready to get on the bus because I'm already out of the house. And she's sitting at the Center Island kitchen going like this, scrolling through her reels. And reels are going to be the death of me. Like, I can't stand the reels because it's dopamine hit, dopamine hit, dopamine hit. And so I'm talking with her like, that will change your mental ability 
to interact with people, mm-hmm. to enjoy your own life. Like it will have an impact on your mental health. So all I can do is take it away from you. So I'm going to take it away from you because you just can't be getting dopamine hit after dopamine hit and not have it impact your mental state. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit of a tangent. And even that face to face, we have a client that's uh, in Canada and uh, we're helping with his mom's house down here and, and uh, he's, I said, when are you coming back? When, you, when, when are you coming in? He said, well, I don't know. It'll be a couple of weeks. I said, well, I want to be sure when you're here, we get to get together. Because I want to sit, I want to look you in the eyes. Mm-hmm. You know, I met him once, and I just, I want to talk to him. And on the phone is good, you know, but it's still not the same as this. Right. You know, sitting down, having a conversation, you know, what are we going to do for mom? You know, what about this piece of furniture over here? You know, what's she taking with her? You know, that that kind of stuff. Um, but you're exactly you're exactly right. And what brought this whole thing up was we have a client that called in uh, while we were having coffee, and uh, and she was concerned because the buyer that bought her home was actually going to have to go to the post office to get his address changed. <clears throat> like that was some big deal. Right. Yeah. And you said to her, or him, or whoever yeah. you were talking to, the they they them, on the phone. Um, Going to the post office is not going to be the worst thing in the world that you do today. You <laughs> yeah. know? Like, Go to the it's post gonna, office. It's going to be just fine. So. Unbelievable. When we come back, I want to talk about with Mike about his uh, election results. Sure. And, uh, and, and what you learned from that whole process and how that is Im- going to impact your business and how, and how it impacts your thought process, really, uh, going forward and interacting and, and what your forecast is with this new uh, Trump administration sweeping victory. Uh, throughout uh, everything. Um, it's going to be amazing. With that, we'll head out to break. Log on to our website, hittnergroup.com, H-I-T-T-N-E-R group.com. This is Real Estate Chalk Talk. Give us a call anytime at 612-627-8000. That number again is 612-627-8000. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. This is your Real Estate Chalk Talk with the Hittner Group. Hittnergroup.com, 612-627-8000. 8,000, 612, 627, 8,000. That phone number has been around for 30 years. Okay, Mike Hilburn. Hey. RTD Companies. Uh, first, give a little plug for your business so people know where you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I tell everybody we're a calendar-driven company. Depends on the time of year. Depends on what we're doing. The whole idea is to keep the guys working all the time. We don't want to lay people off. We don't want to turn over anything like that. So uh, April through September, we power wash and stain wood decks, fences, gazebos, porches, you know, pretty much r- residential stuff. Uh, we wash trucks for FedEx, Coca-Cola, two-minute truck, anything like that. Uh, we wash parking garages. So these apartment buildings I was just mentioning, you can't believe how I see. It's just unbelievable. They're everywhere. And they all need snow plowing and power washing, which is awesome for me. Um, and then we do Christmas lighting. That's kind of a cool little bridge thing we've got. Really, really busy with Christmas lighting. Yeah, you got to be busy with that right now. Yeah, yeah. I just keep waiting for the wheels to come off, and it just doesn't. So it's great. Uh, and then snow plowing. We mm-hmm. do snow plowing in the wintertime. We've really, really pushed into that. So um, that's kind of our commercial snow. Everything commercial. And we do residential, but we only do one zip code, okay. 55113. Oh. And then we do commercial, you know, I don't know, whatever, everywhere, I guess. So... How does that all tie in? Now, you decided last year that you needed to get involved in politics and uh, give back to your community. How would that work out for you? Yeah, no, super, super fun. Okay, so uh, my girlfriend, fiancé, um, gets just annoyed, you know, because, like, you know, when are you going to do something? Just stop talking. It's like, all right, that's a good point. So um, I um, I contacted the Minnesota Republican Party. I mean, you guys – it is the most disorganized thing you can imagine. You would think that there would be a system to that. Right. I called for months trying to say, hey, look, I own a business. I've been here in St. Paul. I raised my kids here. Da, 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 da. If you don't want me, great, but I'd like to just, you know, yeah. talk no, to one, me. No one else has raised their hand. Me. Right. Yeah. Finally <sighs> did get a hold of somebody like three days before the deadline, got endorsed, filled out the paperwork, and then, so now you're in. And then still no like okay here's a checklist start with this and just follow down the list you would think there'd be all that mm-hmm. um and then so uh, and i had a couple of good friends that we've been friends for a long time one's a cpa and one's the vice president of Upshur smith laboratories right so smart guys yeah so one guy was naturally my committee chairman guy and another guy is my treasurer and you, mm-hmm. and you really want both of those right and it doesn't seem like there's going to be a lot to me i didn't think it's like well how much can there be here but it was really nice to have those two guys so the one guy was really good at making connections. The one guy just took care of all the paperwork. It was amazing. 
Um, but you, they're just so the one guy that is really good at connecting, you know, got us a couple conversation with some current state representatives, and then they would just like, okay, here's my, and they would just run through a whole bunch of stuff um, to kind of get you down the road. And I think I think we actually did pretty well. I went to an event maybe a month and a half ago, and I had one of the people come up to me and say, okay, you're the only one that's actually doing anything. You know, because you got to have, po- you know, you want to do postcards, you want to mm-hmm. door to door, you want to do yard signs, you want to have a website. And yeah, if you're going to actually run and try to make a go of it. Yeah. You know, and you got to call your friends, yeah. you know, call your friends. And most of your friends will actually donate from you to you, mm-hmm. but some won't. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but you need a little you bit stiff, of, you stiffed them. You need uh, a little bit of money. To it. Yeah. You need a little bit of money. Here, I'll give you 20 bucks. <laughs> I know it, no, we're good now. But, um. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time. But anyway, you need a little bit of money. And yeah. if you if you raise a little bit of money, the state will give you like six or seven thousand dollars, which okay. is kind of a big deal. Um, so we we raised about twelve or thirteen thousand dollars from friends and family kind of thing. And every and, and the thing is you kick in seventy five bucks, the state gives you the money back. Yeah. It wasn't even a thing where it was right. really anything I, okay, you're gonna have to fill out a form yeah. which I'll send you. Yeah. And it's gonna cost you a stamp. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we did a pretty good job on that. So we had about twenty thousand dollars to spend. Um, in a you know in a district mm-hmm. that uh, we did two mailings we did yard signs we did postcards we went door to door we did lit drops and all this kind of stuff and for me I just thought it was really fun to just do the do the process, process. and sure and, Go and, it. and it's it's like anything you don't know anything until you know it mm-hmm. right and everything's hard until you know how to do it um, and now that we've done it and you know. Um, it's not that hard, mm-hmm. you know. It just isn't that hard. It's a little bit of time. That's an every two years deal, or yeah, the the house is every two years. Okay. So, um, and both Brian and, and Brian Beak, Mike McBride, you know, were really, <laughs> really good friends. So it really was just an unbelievable, cool experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, no, we're definitely going to do it again. And I don't even know what it's going to be. Might be Senate. Might be mayor. You know, it, it's just wherever there somebody wants to need. plug me in. Okay. Right? And if I'm your best option perfect if i'm not fine what's what's kind of interesting in this world is that republicans have jobs right so we have responsibilities we're actually going to work every day Mm -hmm. and you have to fit this in where um most of the democrats they're they're political activists Mm -hmm. so they're working for nonprofit organizations that then allow this space to do this sort of thing okay so there's there's an interesting dynamic that i kind of found from okay um so this becomes their job yeah yeah it's kind of their well, you're going to do, you know, you have something to pay your rent, yeah. which isn't this, you know, because this is nothing. Um, but then, you know, you have the bandwidth to do it. So you wonder why they're so well organized and they're they're so good at this is because that's all they're doing, mm-hmm. where the rest of us have jobs. So what did you learn? What, what is your takeaway then from this experience that you can apply to your regular, your daily life and uh, and going forward? Okay, what I really was impressed with is how, I thought the system was exceptionally fair. So that was really cool to me. So the most that I could donate to my campaign is $5,000. The most that you could donate to my campaign was $1,000. Um, and then and then you can only spend $60,000. And businesses cannot support you. Okay. So no one can outside, um, now maybe PACs or something. I don't know. I'm not part of any of that. Um, but I thought, well, this is actually pretty cool because you're not going in to buy a state the state house right you know really buy it buy it Mm -hmm. you might have a lot of help from more people that sort of thing but that's that's fair you know if you're good at getting people to help you to help you then that's good and then i thought we did a really good job raising money so that was super fun i just you'll get a letter today you will you won't that says here's everybody that thanks for helping Mm -hmm. and here's here's all the stuff that we did and here's what the results we got and that sort of thing you know, so that two years from now, I yeah, stick I with hope, me for the next time around. Yeah, or, yeah, you know, you'll see you got a little something out of your money for mm-hmm. your seventy-five bucks. You know, you'll see that yeah, that was worth seventy-five dollars. Mm-hmm. What what it appears to to the results because the results weren't bad. My goal was thirty percent, so I, I knew. I mean, they told me flat out there is no way on earth you will win. It's just never going to happen. So then I said, well, I don't care because that really was never my goal. My goal was to run. My goal was to have somebody on the other side of that ticket so that With you voice. can vote somebody other than you're forced into this one person. Right. Right? Yeah. And yeah. I think that that changes, that can change over time, right? If, if nobody continues to oppose the one side, 
then you're only hearing the message from the one side because nobody is running and nobody's door knocking and nobody's putting signs in the ground and nobody has a website. Nobody's doing mailings for an opposing point of view. Yeah. Right? And, and, yeah, and so exactly. it continues. Like you look at the election results, just, you know, presidential, it's easy to look at the election results and you see 500,000 people voted for the Democrat and 100,000 people voted for the Republican. Well, like Trump, he came here one time. If you're not putting the effort in into those specific counties where you're losing Mm -hmm. the entire election for the state, then what do you expect the results to be? Right. Mm -hmm. right? So we need people. Well, in time, you you know, Keith and I were talking before the show, time will help me. Right. right? It's like, oh, okay, I remember that guy from last time. Mm -hmm. If you kind of stick with it kind of thing. Um, And, you know, you got to be smart. So the Republican Party wasn't going to give me any money. To, to promote my candidacy because that doesn't make any sense. No, give it to somebody in Maple Grove as, that has a pretty a good, a better than average chance yeah. to do it kind of thing. Um, and that you, you put it into where you're going to get the most results. Did you learn that there were any specific district issues that were specific to your district that you could talk about? You know, crime was one. I had a lot of people mention crime on the door-to-door thing because that was actually pretty fun. So door-to-door, just give you, and I'll answer more of that question with this, is that you know, the whole point of door-to-door is you just go and you say, hi, my name is Mike Hilborn. I'm running for House of Representatives. What's on your mind? Hmm. It's not about me going, here's what I believe, right? They they want to tell you what, what right. they want. So that was really fun, and mm-hmm. that, that was actually pretty interesting. Um, so crime was a big one. Affordability was a big one. Um, you know, just how everything's so expensive. Um, you know, the, the, the police present isn't what it used to be. Schools, of course, is, is one. And then, you know, you had people that were pretty adamant on the whole, you know, we need to change our you know our culture. And the other ones are like, please take the ideology out of it. Mm. Just can we go back to just teaching stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was that was that was good. So is, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Um, and then you found it good to spit. What about now the, the the statewide organization? Did you meet some of the higher ups, or do you can you have any impact or make any impact on them in the off season to say, look, you guys got to get your act together a little bit because it was too hard for me to even get on board here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know what? I that actually that's an email I'm going to send today. Just letting you there's there's this one, one person. Her name's Alicia. She was actually great. Um, that finally, when I found her, it's like, oh, okay, well, here's all the things, right? It's like, Alicia, everybody needs, you know, just right the second you have somebody endorse, you should do that. Um, I'll be following up with her and just seeing, you know, what's the next step? I'd like to do this again. How do I get more involved so that when the opportunity presents itself that I'm... We'll for watch it. for that, Mike yeah. Hilborn, ladies yeah, yeah, yeah. and gentlemen. RTD Companies, this is uh, your real estate chalk talk, money talk coming up next.